back here on plane, you're 23 miles an hour. That's schools of bait. Each one of those little blobs is a school of bait. So Justin, when I'm looking at the fish finder here, just keep doing what you're doing. Like look for boats. Okay. You see I'm gonna hit something or anything, just tell me. Yeah. It's okay if you point out a hundred boats, I don't care. I'm not, I won't get mad. You know? See something close, just let me know. Alright, when we're out looking, a good place to start, places like this. You see several shipping channels come together, creek channels, fresh water. That's a really good spot to start. Alright, we're gonna work a little find them today. There they are. You ran for how long about 45 minutes? 45 minutes. Six o'clock. An hour? We got them, we found them, there they are. Side scan underneath us. Side is going out. Yeah, get a spoon. Why are you still standing next to me? Because he's got a spider. <laughs> Go to work, boy. Look at that, guys. Look at all those fish. Maybe an hour. We were looking. Zigzagging, zigzagging. Couldn't find anything. Marked a whole bunch of nothing. Stay close to the channels. Zigzagging like I always do. And you done found some. What color you got, Mike? Golden, golden, golden. Oh, we got our gold. Uh, let's see, we got tide going out. Starboard side, go ahead put it down, Mike. Yellow. We need to get one down as soon as possible so they stay with us. Yep. Even if you just stick it in our eye holder. All right, someone's going to smack them here good. Woo! Sick! Not. Look at that. These are, these really look like good sized fish. They look sick. I have a feeling these were bigger fish. Is it fighting like a big fish? I don't know. Nope. I just feel like my. Nope. I just didn't even feel. Yeah. Coming right up. So. That's a good looking fish. That's not a bad looking. <laughs> Dude, of course, who catches the first fish? Uh, we all Always. Do this kid. This kid. Yeah, this kid is deadly with a spoon. Awesome. He's got the touch. He's got the feeling. He's got, He's got the, the feeling. Power. power. Yeah, that's right. He's got the power. Yeah. Did it hit while you were reeling it up to the top? You know, actually. Uh, I honestly, I don't know. I just stopped and I didn't feel a spoon on. And so, I was like, did I like, did I lose a spoon? And I start reeling and he just starts going crazy. That's real. Oh. oh, there's some big, got it. There's got it. some phrase in this line. Step down there. Oh, These fish. It's a beautiful. Good fish. That's a good looking fish. Nice. That's the Ben Parker uh, Team Old School Copper. There you go. And uh, you got some frays in this line. Maybe a bluefish whacked it sometime or other. But right there. Nice job, brother. Thank you. <laughs> Set her free. I love the taste of Raritan Bay in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and look at the screen. That's amazing. I do this all the time, guys. It never gets old. Thank God it never gets old. I hope it never does. Big one? Uh, yeah, because the, obviously the bunker is the these are some fish, dude. They're coming up. Most of these are 10 feet off the bottom. Huh? You got, you got one. Bunker? Don't break the ice, baby. Let's go. One thing that's super cool about fishing with these spoons, guys, is 
if you get a spoon down in there, you will keep the fish coming with you. And if you keep them with multiple lines out, they will just follow. And look at that. Hit the BKD. Down in there. Whoa, you keep the fish coming with you. And if you keep them yeah. with multiple lines out, it will just fly. Not now, though. Not now, though. Got him. Got him. Hit the BKD. Pull up. That's on my new rod, man. That's the new 2.0, black and blue 2.0. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one, bro. That's double up. I love a BKD day. All right, buddy, go get another one. Yeah. Love a BKD. We gotta get some line back here. Yeah. I don't wanna interrupt this, but look at that. Look at that. <laughs> you still fighting that thing over there? Yeah, oh, yeah, I love it. Are you tickling it or are you reeling it in? What are you? <laughs> tickling it. Tickling it. <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go, here we go. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one, dude. Oh, that's a big one, bro. That's Woo! Oh! Oh, no. oh, man, dude, I didn't even know he was on there. Come on, bro. That's... Scream! Coming over you. Look how sick those marks are. Can I drop You can do whatever you want, bro. Look at the action that rod, though, man. Check that out. Oh yeah. Oh. That is a beaut. Oh, that's a good one. That's a nice one. Oh, fish. whoa. We're using all my signature rods today. Everyone's got them. He ain't kidding. Rich Colson. Rich Colson. Is it a triple? It's a triple. No, it came off. It came off. Uh, uh, Hurry up. Your dad's still with his. Oh, he's still running. Oh, come on. My forearm's burning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. One pound fish. Look at that rod. Look at that rod. <laughs> pull, pull that one. Here we go. You got it? Yeah. I got it. Yeah, you got it. Bring it to me, Mike. It's two good looking fish. That's a really good looking fish. This guys, are tired. <laughs> <laughs> Get in the boat. Oh yeah. Ooh. That's a cookie cutter. Actually, Mike's got you by a little. Upper teens. And a glow BKD. That glow in the dark. BKD 10 inch. Awesome. I'll show you guys how to read those in a minute. Beautiful fish. Look at that screen over there, Justin. Woo! Alright, Justin. I'm gonna let her go to make some more. Easy does it, girl. Okay. How you do it? Fun way to catch him, right? So this is what I was using. I had several hard strikes, and they would not get hooked. So I switched it to this guy. There's a little rigging bead here to keep that plastic from sliding up. Keep that point more exposed because I want to hook those. They're still with us, man. These fish have just been following us, I swear. We started marking them. It's so important with these spoons, guys, to get one in the water. As soon as you mark a couple fish, get that spoon down there even if you have to drop it down, sometimes I'll drop it down and throw it in a rod holder just to keep something flashing down there. Uh, they will swim right with the boat. It's really, really cool. After you drip for a while, you start to accumulate all these fish under the boat because you're passing more and they just stay right with the spoons. Oh yeah. Dude, they're chasing those schools of bunker. All right, let's move over there. It's uh, we just uh, hold on, are we marking them again? No, no, they lightened up. Let's go over there because uh, 
I can see the bait on top getting blown up, and that's where you want those spoons to be fished. I'm in. We're gonna come right through the school of bunker right here. School of bait. Lots of bait fish around here, guys. Look at them all here. Side scan, down. If you're brand new to striker fishing, don't know where to start, look for bait. A lot, most of the time, it's easier to find bait than the actual stripers. Fish around bait fish and get in the habit of doing that and you'll put some very consistent days together. Those are big fish, man. You can tell these guys are all pushing 20 or, or more. Oh yeah. Oh, they're right here too, bro. Look, something. These just flashed. Oh yeah, straight to the right. You can see them all. See the dorsal fins? Yeah. Oh. That's amazing. What you live for? People. That's what I live for. Look at that. Big old marks. What pow? What pow? Love it, man. Love it. Goop. Put some goop. Look at the screen there, buddy. Skinny goop. There might be one down there. Those are thick. Okay guys, it's our regular 2D sonar. It's down scan, this is side scan. This white line is the keel of the boat. These white marks are striped bass. Those shadows are the shadows from those returns. So when the beam goes that way and that return sends a signal back, this area is left blank because the return blocked it, blocked the, the uh, beam. You see that right there, same thing. When you have your marks far from your shadows, that means your fish are higher in the water column. And that's usually good. That means the fish are active, moving around, looking to eat, not necessarily hunkered down on the bottom for some other reason. These are eating fish. Feeding, feeding, feeding. And that is Justin. And that is Justin's spoon going up and down. Since we're sitting still, let's go sit on the bunker over there. Look straight off the bow, Mike, at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock off the bow. Is that bunker two? Where is it? Where is it, Mike? I see that one right there. Yeah, that's one just where I'm here. Okay. Right in front, 12 o'clock. Oh yes, we're marking good over here. School's right in front of us. Eons. Justin, you drink that spoon underneath this bunker. And you're gonna have a good time. Get her popping right here. Oh, okay. All right, well, let me get over, I'll put right on them. We're not going to drift very far, so we'll park right on top of it, right? You can see all the dorsal fins sticking out of the water. And so we're going to get close to these baits. And we're going to drift with those baits. Look at the shadow on that one. That's a big fish. So someone's going to go down. You just whacked the fish right on the head, Justin. I did, right? You sure as hell did. I just broke it. Yeah, hey, look at it. He dropped his spoon. Wham, right on the fish. There he's going again. Probably the same fish getting marked over. You are thumping a fish's melon. <laughs> They're everywhere. Here we go, here we go, here we go. He's hooked up, ladies and gents. Oh, yeah. Oh, whoa! <laughs> 
You're good, you're good. Hook up, this is where we all hook up here. Oh, 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 this one's a runner. How's your drag on that? The Dozer last few is not, by the way. I wanted to see how long it can make your knot last. What do you mean? What do you mean? I wanted to see how long it can make your knot last. What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> what have you done, Mike? What have you done? Well, I like to think I fished. Just the way I was taught by my daddy. The way he was taught by his daddy's daddy. <laughs> and his daddy's daddy. And his daddy's daddy. Woo! What color spoon are you using? We got the Ben Parker Signature Series Gold. Hammer Gold, man. That gold? That's been my go-to. O2? <laughs> That's been my go-to. Oh, I thought you said back in O2. <laughs> back in O2 Look at that screen. One one hundredth the size in the brook. Barely got him. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, just in that little skinny part. It's a worn out. Look at that. <laughs> why, why is it so shiny and chrome here and gold gold below it? You know, pulling in, and then you got your hook that's going to be slamming against yeah. it. It's that hook. You know, slamming. that's the, that's the way. You know, when you're when you're bringing it up and letting it down. I mean, Mike does that double kiss. Yeah, double tapper. Good look at fish. Look at that, buddy. <laughs> Send her back, Captain. Nasty fish. There she goes. The way we like it. So, Mike, uh, let's show. Well, there's his fish went right down to the bottom, like a rocket is shot down. So, Mike's going to show how he jigs his spoons. He's kind of put his own little little flavor on it. So if you take a look at this Ben Parker Signature Series spoon right here, <laughs> <laughs> you can see what happens. You know, usually when I go, I'll double kiss it. And when it's going down, it's going to slam against the side. You can see right where that hook is. You know, it's all worn off right there. But as it's going down, the reason why I do that is because it's making noise, attracting more fish as it goes down. So check it out. I'm going to come to the side of my back. Mike prefers a spinning uh, setup here with a slow pitch rod. This is one of my signature rods here from Rich Colson. This is the spinning version. Mike really likes it. He's caught a lot of fish on this thing. You ain't kidding, man. It's basically the only one you've been using for the last four I'd have years. To say, so, yeah. I mean, when you got these three mittens, years, you know. <laughs> right, so so if you check it out, when I go down, then I'll give it a, and let it go down again. You know, until I tap the bottom, go up, and give it another, and then it goes down. And when I do that, when it goes for the second time, it's slapping that, that treble hook against the spoon itself to create more noise, attract more fish. Right there. And then it? slack it. Yeah. So he'll put some slack in the line at certain times deliberately to try to get that spoon, to, uh, that hook to pop. Uh, but you don't want to stay slack too long because fish hits it, right? You won't feel it. But right. Mike has it down pat where... I mean, he, it's only a split second. Yeah, that's right. If you watch, you can see it's only a split second. But I know it's enough just to make that treble hook hit right. that spoon. Boom. It's going. And the most important thing is to keep that. You want that spoon to fall like this. You don't want it to fall like this. So if you fish on a semi-slack line. So if you totally slack the spoon, it'll fall like this. Beautiful. But you may not feel a strike because you have so much slack. If you take out too much slack, the spoon now falls like this. Yeah. And it doesn't look very good in the water. You'll feel a strike easy, but you're not going to get as many strikes because the spoon, uh, the action's been killed. So you got to be on that semi-slack where you just have a slight, you just have a bow in the line kind of, and your spoon still falls nice and flat and just tight enough. Like if you have say three inches of slack, when this fish vacuum feeds thump, he's going to pull that spoon more than three inches. He'll get, you'll feel that tap. And uh, that's one big advantage with these uh, slow pitch rods is the uh first of all the blanks are amazing the rain shadow blanks but if you look at the grips the grips carbon fibers all my signature rods have these carbon fiber they're expensive uh but man when you it's like holding the blank when a fish hits yeah so if you look at the real seat almost every real seat has a, a exposed 
section here so you can feel the blank. And there's a reason for that, because if you feel the blank, you can feel the hit. Now with these carbon fiber, as long as you're touching these, it's like you're holding the entire blank directly. Everything transfers and it just sends that vibration right down to your hand really quick. A little braid on there as you're a stretch, and man, you can feel everything. I'd have to say you become one with the rod. Don't want the rod, that's right. <laughs> I mean, you have thousands and thousands and thousands of pumps in this, in this one rod. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's not go tell that the general public. Yeah. So finding bait fish is good, right? But if you watch these here, these bunkers, it's just Menhaden, Atlantic Menhaden. When you see, you know, they're on top, you see the dorsal fins. When you see them, they go shh in the rain of water and they're moving. That's because they're being fed on from beneath. So finding bait is good, but if you're finding bait that's, I call it flashing, when they're just shh, shh all flaring and flashing under the water to get away, man, it's, uh, it's hard to beat that, the fish underneath. You, you put these spoons underneath those, you jig these spoons, but the same size as the, those uh, Menhaden, and you jig them just underneath those schools. Mm. It can be some amazing fishing. Just cruise around until you find the bait. Fish between the bottom of the uh, bait school and the bottom. Touch the bottom once in a while. You see any schools? God bless you. Straight ahead. Keep going straight right now. Okay. All right. If you're new to striped fishing or any fishing really. Uh, you need to find out a few things before you can start catching the fish, right? To the right, buddy. All right. If they're relating to a piece of structure and they're just sitting on that structure, good time to cut bait fish. Anchor up over that structure. Get some cut bait on the bottom. Or you can use worm, blood worms, uh, clams, cut bunker. Pretty much anything, really, on cut bait. Fresh and salt. So that's really key. Find out what those fish are relating to before you can put your game plan together. I'll talk to people and say, man, we, there's fish were everywhere. And uh, man, I just didn't know what to use. I said, well, uh, what do you think the fish were doing? You get good sonar, you can figure out what you're doing. But even if you don't have sonar, keep changing the baits, change the presentation over and over again until you figure it out. If you stay with just one bait all day long, and there's fish everywhere and that's no good. You've got to constantly be working and changing. Once you figure it out, then everyone in the boat can make that switch. You can really have a killer day. Justin here, he's a killer with these spoons. And he's using his flutter spoon and we're getting, you'll see, here's a suspended fish. We're about to drift over all the bait schools. And he's fishing that spoon right between the bottom of the bait and hitting the bottom. So then put that one out and just uh, show me your technique, how you like to do it. So I go all the way to the bottom is where I love to start. Uh, we'll get to the bottom. And then it's just, I like to do the hard one the first, this way you get it really going, and then I let it sink all the way down. And then I just keep going. Now, if I'm going like two, two minutes or so and the hard ones aren't working, I'll go a little bit slower and I'll let it sit for a little bit and I'll go a little bit slower. And it's all about just changing, changing the eye level and changing the angles uh, these fish are seeing. I think it'll be a real fish. If you just do the same synthetic motion over and over again, they'll start to realize. a boy, I like it. I like it. So here's, here's the fish we're talking about. You can see they're suspended and they're feeding on bait that's higher in the water column. So that spoon is a great way to target these fish because uh, not only are they looking up at the bait that they're gonna see these spoons raining down, but there are bluefish in here tearing up the bunker. And when they tear up the bunker, they're like piranhas if you never caught them before. And they'll just chunk up the, tear them to pieces, the bunker bait fish pieces rain down the stripers are looking up, catching those pieces that are raining down, and they're going to eat your spoon that's raining down as well. That's it right there. You see what he just did? Look at the bow he's got in his line. See that bow? That is a perfect, that's a perfect semi-slack presentation. So get a hard juke jerk up, and as he's coming down, the line has a bow in it, but it's not, you know, like a, it's not blown all the way around and laying on top of the water and floating under the water, super slack, semi-slack. So he's got the nice bow in the line, that's perfect. It's just enough to keep your action horizontally falling, not like this. And you can still have enough contact with the spoon to feel that strike. So that little bow in there, 
That fish only needs to take a couple inches of it and you're gonna feel it, especially with the braid. He'll yank that bow right out and you'll feel it. So here it goes. These are just suspending fish. They're relating to that bait that's on the surface. We know what they're relating to. They're suspended, they're very interested. So we really need to work our baits where they're suspended and up. And where we're seeing them close to the bottom underneath of those bait fish there. He's raining a, a spoon down, so. Mike and Justin, we're doing this as a team, and we gotta work together to figure it out so quick, so much quicker doing this. So I have two guys on spoons. They're working the middle of the water column down to the bottom. Eric and I are fishing from the middle of the water column to near the surface or just below the surface. Now, once someone hooks up, start making those adjustments. And then usually by the end of the day, we're all on the same bait, you know, once you get it dialed in. But if you've got buddies who never kick in for gas and you don't want to take them fishing and they never pay, take them fishing. Because the more people you put on your boat, the quicker you're going to figure out how to catch them. Five spoons down in the water is extremely attractive. You go out there by yourself with one spoon, it's just not the same having five, six spoons down there. Fish all come, they follow the spoons. And to really help all right so justin is using uh, one of my slow pitch rods and he's got the turn two on here what's, what's nice about that turn two is you can cast these spoons a mile i mean it, the braking system is so aggressive in there uh, almost no thumb so you really don't need to you know to have a, a very uh, experienced thumb he's got a turn two on one of my signature slow pitch rods we're combining two different types of jigging i just like the slow pitch uh, jigging rods for this because they're soft they're extremely balanced. We have the weighted butts and uh, they're strong. That carbon fiber and the carbon fiber grips. So it's six foot six, short rod. We don't want to move the spoons too much. The, uh, the limberness also keeps the spoon moving slower. And um, a rod that bends almost all the way down to the reel when you're jigging, it, it may sound confusing, but it actually helps you stay connected to the spoon longer because the rod is loaded very often. So when you even start to drop it and the rod has that load on it, think about if the rod was too stiff. It would straighten out right away, slack the line. With these with a slight bow in it all the time, it just really helps you stay connected to it. So we're combining two different kinds of jigging styles here, but that's the way I like to do it. And uh, so uh, uh, what kind of test you got on there, Justin? I got a 50 pound braid with a 30 pound fluoro. That's all tied by an FG knot. Nice. Yeah, those FG knots are, uh, What's good about the FG knot is it's only a knot tied in the braid. So you can use, if you wanted to, you could put 70, 80 pound fluorocarbon on that little rod with an FG knot because the braid wraps around the fluoro and squeezes it. The FG stands for fine grip. And the harder it pulls, the more it grips onto that fluorocarbon. So the knot is only in the braid. There's no knot in the fluorocarbon at all. And I'll show you a close up look. Let's let down and we'll get to your knot and we'll show you. The only thing that stinks about the FG knot is it takes a little time to get used to. But if you look right there, let's see. If you look, right, this is a 30 pound and there's no knot in this fluorocarbon. So look at that, it's seamless, right? And it looks like it's, it looks like it's, this fluoro is tucked inside the braid. So the only really knot or wraps are done in the braid. And that goes through the guides so nice. It allows us to use that 20 foot piece of leader that we like. The reason I use 20 foot, for one, it makes a good marker. You drop it down quick, you see your FG knot go by, you know you got 20 foot, you can make your adjustments. But uh, even more importantly, if I, uh, if we're, like earlier today, we pulled up and we were marking stripers 30 feet of water from five feet below the surface all the way down. Just thick, stacked up fish. I don't want 50 pound braid Say I was only using a, a four foot leader and I go to the bottom in 30 feet. All those fish saw my braid come right down through there, all their bodies and get pulled up and down and pulled up and down. And they're just seeing my braid all day going up and down through them, up and down through them, probably bumping them uh, here and there. And I'd rather not have that there. I'd rather than have more uh, low vis fluorocarbon. It may not make a difference. I don't know if it does. We don't really know, but i tell you what, I have dropped line in before especially trout fishing and watch with nothing on just a lion the fish take off so they see it for sure so i just like to have that stealthy you know more clear uh line going through the stacked up fish that's why we use a 20 foot leader
You don't have to, you can do three, four, five foot, whatever you like. But I'm using 20 all the time. Whether you like it or not, that's what I'm doing. That's what Justin's doing too, right Justin? Yeah. That's right. Oh, what a fish. Oh! Oh, what a fish. Oh! Nice. He hit the white, huh? Oh yeah. The drag going out? Oh yeah. The drag going out? Yeah. Oh heck yeah. Take your thumb away from that. <laughs> Don't be thumb in the spool. Don't be thumb in the spool. That's a good fish. You stay steady. Gotta have to stop the man. You just want to put the clicker on so you guys can hear the ticket line. This and that. Come on, come back here if you want. This one might be a hoss, bro. But we are marking nothing but big fish. Uh-oh. Just crank, just crank, just crank. He's swimming at you, swimming at you. Don't stop cranking. There you go. Now, now you can load the rod. There you go. Nice. He's, he's swimming at you. <laughs> he's swimming at you, swimming at you. Keep cranking, keep cranking. He's swimming at you. You gotta beat him. We gotta beat him. Yeah. Oh, oh! That was a hoss. Oh, dude, oh, look, he spit it at you, too. Uh, that was a hoss. All right, put it back down. Damn, bro. Dang, that stings. He well, just started swimming at me. Yeah, he, that was a, a wily fish. All right, get another one. Take the clicker off. <laughs> All right, that's right. Go right, right back where you were and repro uh, reproduce that. <laughs> Moving? No. Apple pie or banana muffin. Banana muffins? You want one? A banana muffin? Oh, oh. Alright, we're not having a banana muffin. Get him out. Get him out of here. You got bananas on the boat? Yeah. No, 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 no. Is it banana muffin? Yes. You mother That's why you catch no more fish. There you go. You see that? You poisoned yourself, man. You should have stuck with the beer. It's funny because about a half an hour ago, I had it while we were searching for fish. It's like joking around. I forgot to ask you. Imitation banana? Imitation banana? Oh, man, you see that? Look, you're looking at bananas. Oh, man, you see that? Look, you're looking at <laughs> you were thinking about that. <laughs> so what was that? The hostess store would have been great. You can load the boat up with apple pies. Apple pie. This apple pie sucks though, so. <laughs> the repo depot position. We have to give Justin enough time to turn that banana muffin into poo. <laughs> <laughs>